Hey everybody, I'm Alicia Toot from A Music Blog Yeah, and I'm standing here with Royal Canoe. How are you both doing today? Doing well, thank you. I'm glad to hear. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Awesome. So we actually spoke with you both previously in the past, but it was via email, so it's nice to have you both in person today. Um, so you're currently on tour with Bombay Bicycle Club, so how's that treating you so far? Uh, it's, it's been a bit of a roller coaster so far, but uh, they've been a fantastic band to play with. Great audiences throughout, very eager young crowds, and uh, it's been a great experience so far. Yeah, the roller coaster part that Brennan's alluding to is that he had a bit of, he sprung a bit of a leak in his nose. And so we spent the greater part of the western U.S. leg of the tour hopping from ER to ER trying to figure out... I saw, pho yeah, I saw photos about yeah. that. So. It was pretty, it was a stressful and weird way to tour, to be honest. And then finally in Portland it all came to a head when they did surgery and fixed him up. So He's good now? Yeah, He's good. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm healing quickly and back on top of the world in no time. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned it's a roller coaster because when we actually first spoke, you said the, your favorite part about touring is the fact that it is a roller coaster. So, um, just when it comes to being on the road, what would you say is your favorite part? Uh, definitely the playing of the shows. Yeah, like everything. I mean, it's we always joke about this this like period before you play where you're just like completely reanalyzing all your life decisions and you you kind of all of us kind of go through like a bit of a low period. But I think that's just like the it's like your emotions kind of receding before you get to like, you know, expel them all on stage. And I'm comfortable with that, but it is, it's, yeah. So the, the show, the playing part is, is by far the best, the best part of it. But you know what? We all get along really well too, and we try to have fun when we can. Like, you can't just have every single part of touring be driving and playing. You have to Sleeping, to, eating. Yeah, you have to try to go to the beach when you can. We're from Winnipeg, so beach is like a foreign concept to us. So we try to do that as much as possible, and yeah, I don't know. Try to try to like make uh, make light of every single situation possible, and like be and maintain some level of sanity, which is also very hard sometimes. You mentioned doing fun stuff on the roads. I mean, what are a couple of these things that you like to do to keep yourselves occupied? Um, well, it, it usually depends on geography. We yeah, we try to take advantage. I mean, there's rarely time on on days when we're doing consecutive shows to to stop for even a picnic, say. But you know, if we're we we were hoping we didn't get a chance to. We were hoping we, we might be able to get a stop uh, at the Grand Canyon in on this tour, but that that didn't work out. But but things like that. I mean, every time we're along the West Coast, we make sure we stop at a, a town called Oceanside, California. It's between L.A. and San Diego. And just spend an hour on the beach. You know, jump in the water jump in the waves, maybe drink a beer on the beach. And, uh, just yeah, take advantage of the things that we don't have at home. It's mostly like planning to do something and then not being They're able not to do it because you don't have time. <laughs> but feeling like you're going to do it is pretty, I don't know, maybe that's half of it. Yeah, but we, you know, we, like we, there's seven of us in our, in our tiny little van and so you just like, you, half of it is like figuring out a seat that doesn't make you go insane. We have like what we call the mania seat. And so that's a seat no one wants because yeah. you absolutely go nuts. And so I'm secretly kind of stationed out in the back right now, and I hope no one notices, but I've been spending like the last four days back there, and it's pretty awesome. It's really nice and quiet back there. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We actually also listen to some – we do um, – we listen to a lot of audiobooks. We kind of got into that. We did the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy really? on the last tour. It was probably like a good 200 hours of, of reading. Did either of you guys fall asleep? <laughs> I'm sure at some point, yeah. We were in, in, in brief installments. Usually it was three hours maximum at a time. So, so you guys fans of the movies as well, or just, you were like, let's yeah. give these books a chance, yeah? yeah? It, I mean, it's the writing that's, the movies are exciting and fun, but, I mean, it's Tolkien's writing that's the, the highlight of it all, for sure. Very cool. Um, so I wanted to bring up your music, of course. Um, last September, you released Today We're Believers, and that was uh, your debut record, so just going back a couple or, sorry, going forward a couple of months now, what are your thoughts on the record? Now, there's been some time to reflect on it. Well, yeah. <laughs> we're, we, we haven't really moved far past it. We've been working on a bit of new material while we've been home, but I, we're still in love with it and still excited to be playing it every single night. So, I, I mean... For us, like, the songs, when we're... Like, listening to the record, I actually probably haven't heard it since we got the master and listened to it once. I don't really like to listen to my own music after it's done because when it's done you've put all this time and energy into it and one of the things you sacrifice is your ability to really enjoy it objectively because mm -hmm. you you know you're just picking apart every last little minute detail and so you can't hear it without hearing all the things that you want to change or all the things that you labored over you remember how how difficult they were but um, 
So our relationship with the music and the songs is primarily through uh, through just performing them live. And every night they present new challenges, and are, we're lucky enough that either we're not talented enough, or else the songs are difficult enough yeah. to keep them challenging. <laughs> Whatever the case may be, we we get a lot of excitement and enjoyment out of out of playing every night. Still, yeah. they, they, they keep us on our toes every night. Still. What are some of your favorite tracks to play live? I mean, it's only a couple of days into this tour, but what are you enjoying the most so far? Um, well, we do the. We just released a video for a song called Button Fumbler, mm -hmm. and um, it's a live video, so it's us. It's like a strange combination of a music video and a live performance video. Your, your videos are always so bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not, it's true. Like the <laughs> concepts are crazy. Yeah, the point, right? On purpose, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that that song's that song's always enjoyable to play because the live version is slightly different than the record, and yeah. so it's always nice to try to do something a little different with the live experience. Well, I've been going through your Facebook statuses, and it's pretty much just festival announcement after announcement after announcement. So you have a pretty busy summer ahead of you guys. But um, if you were to curate your own festival lineup, who would you like to be part of that? Ooh. Ooh. Wow, that might take a bit of thinking. <laughs> right now, I. Oh. Well, I think I think James Blake would be up there somewhere. Uh, Outcast, now that they're performing live again. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, like I probably Pharaoh, uh, the Knife, maybe. Um, they, they were just here, and they their were, yeah, their performance was nuts. Uh, one of my photographers covered it, and the photos she got were people like sprawling across the stage, and it just looked amazing. She told me it was great. So that's really cool. Yeah, yeah I've never seen them live, but I'm definitely one of our influences, and I'd love to see them sometime. Would you guys like to be in your own lineup, or uh, just sit and watch? That would feel weird if we were curating it. I don't think we'd put ourselves in there. No. Yeah. That would be that would be like such an egomaniacal thing to do. So yeah, yeah. Just lay back and watch. Yeah, exactly. All right, and then we'd put ourselves on a B stage somewhere during the day or something. Yeah. yeah, really early, so you can actually see everything. That's actually one of the things about a lot of these festivals. We're doing them for the first time, but it's like you know you want to be playing in like the best spot possible but there's like a small part of me that's actually kind of excited that we're probably going to be playing earlier so then we can see all these things that we've never had a chance to see because it's probably going to surprise you but not a lot of things come to Winnipeg so <laughs> so you have to it's you know a lot of a lot of uh, bands that we're really excited to see are going to be playing and so we're going to have to check a lot of them out. Well, something I read um, while going through our last, or another interview, actually, is um, you were discovered an alter ego when you were in Saskatchewan. So I just wanted to, uh, to go a bit on that, because I read this in an interview. Someone oh, saying, that. yeah, so... Um, Brent. Yes. Oh, yeah, Brent. So just tell us a little bit about this. Where did this come from? I think everyone, everyone in the band has an alter ego, like a joke alter ego. And they, they hadn't, yeah, I don't know, mine hadn't come about yet. Uh, and we bought we bought a new trailer at the start of our last tour, uh, and the company that the company we bought it from, the trailer company, uh, gave us a free cap, a ball cap. So in the picture, you can see me in the hat, and and that that was sort of the genesis. I'd never wear a ball cap, and especially not like a trucking company with like a, advertisement with, a checkered, with like a checkered flag yeah. on it, yeah. flag and phone numbers on either <laughs> side. And so yeah, I don't know. We just we kind of came up with this. This idea of Brant, the, the like truck driving. Brant with a D, like okay. Brant, B R A N D T. The the truck driving, light beer loving, like hot wings slinging. Yeah, that was about it, I think. Okay. It's I mean it's still in development. <laughs> One day there will be a sitcom. One day he'll fully there's shine. All six of this, yeah, all six a merchandising, merchandising deal in the works though. <laughs> it's like, yeah, amazing. Brent. Yeah. One example of, of another of the alter egos is our, our drummer, one of our drummers, Derek. Uh, his alter ego owns a, uh, a chain of Irish pubs. Okay. Deco Duels is the name. He's uh, never been so to Ireland. He's not Irish, but he has like dyed green hair and wears a kilt all the time. And if you don't wear green on St. Patrick's Day and you come to Deco Duels, you get kicked out. Yeah, yeah. Lifetime or beaten. Yeah. Lifetime ban. He has like three... He's like three... Uh, Buck Hunter machines, like every single version of Buck Hunter, he keeps them in the back. You guys have really thought this out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we spent a lot of time in a van, you see. Yeah. Like, we put on so many miles this year that you just, at some point, you just lose your mind. And then you just start to delve into some weird, sick fantasies. And one of them is Deco Duels, Irish fun. 
At least these are relatively safe things to explore while we're losing our yeah. minds. So. There's, there's a lot of shit you just really don't want to hear, actually. But uh, so everything is, I guess. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. We we're definitely curious. Well, no, now we're just at the last question of the interview, which is, what's the best part about being in Royal Canoe? Best part of being in Royal Canoe? I think we all, uh, you know what? I think we all really, this is going to sound cheesy and sappy, but we all really enjoy each other's company mm -hmm. after four years of as much touring as we've done it's just inevitable that you have to like you have to like come to terms with everyone's personality their flaws and all of their you know be beautiful flaws and and I think we've all learned to to kind of accept each other for who we are at this point and yeah I think going back to what I was saying earlier we just really um, we really believe in our music and so every night it's it's there you're we're not self-conscious of what we're playing we're we're confident in what the music that we're making i think that's a really that's a really awesome gift i know like we've put a lot of time into it when we're at home and so it's nice to get up there and feel like you're putting out something that you believe in mm -hmm. all right awesome well i'd just like to thank both of you so much for taking the time to speak with us today and uh i'm alicia yeah i'm alicia Toot from music vlog and you should watch our interview with royal canoe thanks very much everybody thank you, thank you. <laughs>